I had no idea dermatology sunscreen were that popular until I received some in the mail. I hadn't even heard of the brand at all, not even their infamous needleless serum, which is apparently a bestseller. The products are more on the pricey side, with the Dermatology Universal Tinted Moisturizer SPF 46 and their Dermatology Broad Spectrum SPF 45 being among the more affordable options on the website which is only consistent for a brand that takes a SPF first approach in skincare. You can't tell people to apply sunscreen liberally and then have them sell a kidney for half a bottle. But what else is there to say about these two products? Could they convince a sunscreen snob? Let's talk. If you're new here, welcome! I'm Dr. Anne, a physician passionate about skincare and well aging. The Universal Tinted Moisturizer claims to be sunscreen and a few foundation, which plans naturally to match all skin tones with a natural healthy glow. Their broad spectrum SPF 45 claims anti aging benefits, is oil free, and apparently leaves no white residue, despite looking pretty white on the model's face here. Both products are fragrance free and really have no scent, and both feel more hydrating on my skin than I would have expected given they contain inorganic aka mineral filters and are oil free. I mean they aren't hydrating Asian sunscreen but have a much more pleasant texture than the thick and suffocating sunscreens I grew up with. Sunscreens go on as last step in your routine and for me both easily could replace a moisturizer in the summer. As always, you need to make sure you apply enough to get the claim protection, and while that was easily achievable with the Dermatology Broad Spectrum SPF 45, it did take a while to sink in completely, but after around 10 minutes looked and felt very nice, the Dermatology Universal Tinted Moisturizer did take a little more work. Despite claiming no white residue, the broad spectrum SPF did make my skin noticeably paler initially. It did get better over time, but if you are any darker than I am, I doubt you will be able to wear it generous layer without white cast. White cast is obviously not a problem with the tinted version, but the color in this one is too dark for me and would look a little orange around my hairline and brows at the end of the day. The coverage is pretty sheer though, so maybe it will work on darker skins as it blends in better. For those of us on the paler side, the color just isn't right though. Which is a shame, as the texture and finish in both is beautiful, looks very skin-like, and with the tinted one doesn't rub off onto the mask or settle into fine lines. Both combine organic aka chemical and inorganic aka mineral filters with 12% zinc oxide and 7.5% octinoxate, a mixture that offers broad spectrum protection but isn't the most effective on the UVA side. The filters are usually well tolerated by sensitive skins though, which is a bonus. The rest of the formula is pretty similar, with niacinamide and glycerin offering skin benefits and not wheat extract added for infrared light protection and as antioxidants. I will, for very obvious reasons like the more modern filters, stick to my European or Asian sunscreen favorites, but I'm happy to finally be able to recommend sunscreen to my US followers that doesn't need to be shipped in from abroad. Due to their texture, I think they work best for normal to dry skins, very oily skin might find them too heavy, but overall they are a very good option if the slight white cast in the untinted version is a problem for you. Just make sure to apply the recommended amount, which is always more than you'd initially think. If there is anything you would like to add, please do so in the comments below. I will link to more videos you might find interesting on the screen now and add links to my Instagram, blog and Patreon account in the description box. See you soon, bye!